This is Perry Knoppert, the multipotentialite, and I'm here for the second time connected to Jordan all the way from Amsterdam. And now I have to pronounce your name well. Hashem. 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 Yep. God, I, I, I need to practice more. Hashem. Right. Yeah. Nice to see you and hear you again. I hope this time the sound is much better because the first time we did our talk, our conversation, the sound wasn't very good. And right. because I wear a headset, I can hear you very well. But when we listened it back on YouTube, it was so-so. So, -so. so right. better, better luck this time. I want to ask you the first question immediately. Why the research and all the thinking and spending hours in, am I a specialist or a generalist? Where is this coming from? Okay. So I'm going to answer it assuming that we did, I didn't answer it the last, like assuming that the, the, the person didn't hear the first uh, episode. Let's do that. Okay. So, um, <sighs> right. The answer yes. is, uh, yeah. um, I was doing research for 80,000 hours. Uh, I was doing the workshop on 80,000 hours, which is, um, uh, kind of a, an org organization devoted to um, how how should you choose your career, uh, you know the choice career choice right, and I I thought you know usually when I approach a topic I always think of the trade offs between the two uh, two kind of what are we dealing with so I thought their advice hinges on whether uh, you think what, what's better. happening right now i want to ask you a question first so what's happening in your head right now are there too many thoughts with this question like right yeah so happening? one one you is know, are you looking for an angle to answer the question or what's happening in your head right now right one is I'm thinking of the chronology of, of what has happened. So should I give a yeah. chronological answer, uh, yeah. beginning, uh, going back from my history? And then uh, another thing is uh, I'm thinking of the time constraints. So I'm thinking, no, I shouldn't give a chronological answer. I just can give what's relevant to this topic. So uh, what do you think? Is this, is this thinking rather into a generalist or a specialist way of thinking in approaching the answer to my question? The it goes the breadth of topics, the, the multiple aspects, how you can look at it from different perspectives is from a generalist uh, aspect. However, mm -hmm. the obsessiveness, I think, is a specialist uh, thing. When you keep obsessing about something, you keep keep. So the obsessing, for example, I'm obsessed about the accuracy of what I'm saying, yeah. right? I yeah. think uh, accuracy uh, is more about uh specialism mm -hmm. and is this is this thinking always coming back like you were th saying about eighty thousand hours and and looking for a job and then you started to research about generalism and specialism so these two sides this is is this what's always happening in your brain when you think about something that you always look at the the two opposites i think um if you if you read my article, you'd find the first uh, kind of paragraph is kind of uh, I'm being I'm roasting people who are uh, who think who are simple minded. Uh, yeah. What I you know how I see life, it's usually not a black or white situation. There's uh, there's usually like multiple forces and uh, that they are kind of there's a dialectic. So the, there are benefits and negatives of each side. So I, I try to think of what is at stake here. I don't, that, I don't know if that makes sense. Make, of does course. that make sense? Yeah. But yeah. Let's, let's go back to the initial question. Why are you interested for yourself, In, not for 80,000 hours, not for the job search, but you are very interested also in yourself answering the question, where am I? Am I an specialist am i a generalist 
I'm in the middle, but why, where, how does the, how did this happen? Not it, everybody is thinking about it this way. Right, right. It okay. There, there is a, a kind of a story behind this. It's uh, for me. It's more about choosing a career, right, mm -hmm. rather than being a generalist or a specialist. And one aspect of it is should be a generalist or a specialist. So uh, when I was growing up, I was very kind of uh, anxious slash. Uh, I I wanted to answer this question. Like I was 14 years old and I did a, a, a career assessment, 10 hours, right? Yeah. Career assessment at the and then 10 hours study style assessment. When you uh, were 14. At the end of the, when you hmm? were 14. 14. When you yes. were 14 years old, you did an assessment for 10 hours right. to figure out your career path or right. your I the way to just, go. Right. Okay. Uh, and then an, another separate term for study soil. But and in any case, the report said Hashem is so accurate that he left us two voice messages saying that he's concerned that his answers were not accurate enough. So I, I, I think it came uh, out of a place of like just thinking rationally about it. I'm going to spend the rest of my life after I graduate in, a, in this path. So I might as well, uh, you know, get that choice right. And because, and you know, I should invest time because it's, it's well worth it. You know, we spend more time shopping than we think about uh, shopping for clothes than, than we think about uh, what should we do with our lives. So yeah. I know it just sounded rational to me. Now, in hindsight, that kind of thinking is more specialist than generalist because it's, uh, I wasn't very flexible in my, in my thought. I thought, okay, I'm gonna one path, straight line. So I have to get my uh, choices right from right, right, right now. There has been a transition uh, as I explained the, the first time, throughout my journey, I, I moved from being, you know, 90% specialist to uh, if there's a kind of a spectrum between z zero is generalist and 100 is specialist, I moved from 90 to 50. Mm -hmm. I realized that life is, is not that static and one straight line. Uh, you cannot plan ahead that far away. I mean, you can plan some some aspect, but you have to leave a, a huge chunk of life for the the unknown and and to be flexible. Uh, is is Hashem a question? Um, is it normal in Jordan for a fourteen year old mm -hmm. to do an assessment like that? No, it's not normal. <laughs> Why, get, did, uh, why did that not, happen to you? What? Why? Is was that your own decision, or were the? It, was this your parents who said, you know, you need to do this, or where was no, this coming from? It it was my decision. Uh, it wasn't just the assessment. I was like obsessed about that that question. What am I going to do when I graduate? Uh, it's definitely not normal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I still have in the book of my memories, uh, you know, the what color is my parachute? Yeah, I bought that when I was like again, like 14 or something, 15. Um, and I was just like, come on, I need to decide, I need to decide. Uh, so no, it's not normal. I think and, part and of how it is, old are you now? I am 30. You're 30. Yes. So when you were 14, you did this assessment. Right now, we're 16 years later. Yes. Here you are. You're figured out that you're not, it's not black and white. You're not 100% specialist. You're not 100% generalist. You are a generalist who's focused on details. So that means you're uh, half way in the way. spectrum. No? I wouldn't phrase it this way. No? I would phrase it, in, um, I would say that. My, my specialty is research. So I find stuff. The word find is the specialty part. 
And the word stuff is the general uh, the journalism part. So what does this what does stuff mean? So it can range from anything from people to content to evidence to telephone numbers to data to images to videos blah 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, this is how I, I see myself. Did it help you to do the assessment when you were 14? When you look back at the past 16 years and where I'm you not are sure. now and uh, still I, I trying think I, to I, figure I, out? I think it did. I, I mean, I ended up eventually uh, studying in, in uh, my major was in psychology. Mm -hmm. So, and it was one of the recommendations. Um, so I think it, it did kind of confirm. And I also had, before I was interested in psychology, but I had this unrealistic expectation uh, that this assessment will give me everything I need now to operate in this life, which is again, say, you know, I don't, I no longer think like that. I understand that it's an incremental process. Uh, it's much more complex than, than just doing one assessment. Did you, when, I, when I read your article, and when we did our fa uh, YouTube video, the first one, um, the word happiness is, keeps coming back. Yeah. Um, is, the, is that your next assessment as a 30-year-old in where happiness lies? Or did you figure it out already? Because I find that interesting that you're... You're talking about happiness, and and I saw people responding in our on our interview as well, talking about yeah. happiness as a specialist or as a generalist or as someone in in between or whatever. So, where is is that your next big question in life? Where does happiness belong? Or, um. So the thing is, uh, that question is part of my original question is where should I, what should I do with my life? Intrinsic in it is what would make me happy. Um, if uh, one of the books that I recommend is uh, The Joy of Work, mm -hmm. it talks about uh, the factors for job satisfaction and there are 12 of them, right? Um, I think about nine of them, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, nine of them uh, apply to contexts, w whether inside of work or out outside of work. So for example, variety, you want to have the right variety in your life. Mm -hmm. um, that would apply to your job, but at the same time, you, you would uh, apply to your life outside of, a, of your job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you have too much to routine, for example, after you finish working, that's that impacts your happiness as well. Yeah. So are you happy? How how is your happiness <laughs> at the moment, right now? I'm okay. I I, I I'm afraid to uh, label myself as either happy or not happy. Uh, I say I can say I'm okay. Mm -hmm. right. What do you think of people that seems to be always happy? that they, you know, these kind of people, you know, they're like, I'm so happy. Right. Everything is fantastic. I mean, good for them. Yeah. Uh, I think part of it is, okay, this is kind of be demotivating, but I think part of it is, is, is kind of genetics. Like people are, some people are just predisposed to this cheery disposition mm -hmm. and good for them, you know? Yeah. So... Maybe part of it is in your DNA, like maybe a part of it is in our DNA to be a specialist or a generalist and to be happy or not. So, but I do think it's interesting to figure out how it all works into, in, in your own system to, to really understand you and to be happy or not, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, this is the ultimate kind of... Uh... But I do Both think a lot of specialists are not happy. A lot of specialists are not happy. How did you, how did you know that? Well, 
I think a lot of people in the world are specialists. So let's say 70% or 80% in the world are specialists. When mm. you look at the world, you see a lot of unhappy people, a lot of products, a lot of conversations, a lot of coaching and training is all to become happy. You know, this mm. is this is our big internal fight is to be mm. happier as mm. we are. All these books, my goodness, how many books are there about becoming happy, you know, and happiness? Mm. So I think the majority of people isn't very happy. Mm. And um, so therefore I'm saying, well, the majority is specialist. The majority is also not happy. And I know, of course, a lot of multipotentialites or polymath or generalists. And although it seems to me that they all have or had a very difficult life, many of them, so maybe the same 70 or 80 percent seems to be happy to me. Hmm. Well, one thing is the, the, the first line of logic of that the majority of people are specialists and the majority, majority of people are, um, uh, are not happy. Therefore, it's just yeah, correlation does not equal causation. Just no. because uh, there's a correlation doesn't mean that one caused another. But if I'm going to... Uh... But let's pretend it's right. Let's pretend the correlation is, you know, well-based well and possible. And, uh, and I'm not talking complete nonsense. <laughs> and and let's, let's, for the sake of it, say that's the case, right? Just to think in these boxes. But what's, what's the question then? Are you happier when you are a generalist? I think for me, I'm happier when I'm doing something that, that aligns with my, 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 uh, my nature slash profile. Mm -hmm. So whether that's uh, being a specialist or being a generalist. So let's, let's think of the things but, that but make me happy. Let's let's think. Let's picture this person, a specialist who goes to his job every day, doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And as a specialist, as a specialist, he or she enjoys it, right? Mm -hmm. But still, again, majority of people really have to motivate themselves every day to go back to work. And of course, they say to the outside world, "Oh." It's my calling to be a teacher or, oh, this is really what I need to do or I'm so happy with my job. And when we are very honest, you know, if these people win the lottery and they get 50 million, the first thing they always say is that they will quit their job. Mm. So I'm thinking maybe being a generalist makes you a bit more happy. But on the other hand, in our society, you can't be an optimist or you can't be a generalist because those people are not the intellectual people, right? So when Who you're an the intellectual? Well, when you're an optimist and when you're oh. happy, and, and we're in, when you're saying life is fantastic, whatever happens, people don't really take you seriously, right? Right. I mean, a few things to unpack. Um, number one is, um, like right off the bat, I, th I thought of a counter correlation. Yeah, tell me. I think uh, entrepreneurs, Entrepreneurship uh, is a place where uh, generalists thrive. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with me? Yes. At the same time, I think entrepreneurs, they're, they're, there's a good case to be that they're a miserable bunch. Like, they're not one of yeah. the happiest people I've ever met. Uh, no. And actually, that book, The Joy of Work, you know, mentions this, that, that, that 
this con continuous obsession with growth is is not conducive to 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 a lot of happiness but at the same yeah. time it's a trait in, in entrepreneurs so this is one thing but, but again correlation is not equal causation uh, another thing when i when you the, the the image that comes to me if i want to go along your nar narrative is that i think um multipotentialites are people who do what they want and this is the cause of happiness while specialists who are more traditional don't do what they want do what the norm is and what the norm is can be completely opposite to their nature and blah 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 so that might be the the the, the reason is that the the people the community you're in tend to be uh, kind of a walk the untrodden path do whatever you want type of thing how does this how is this how is I, I agree I agree. I, I hope not to agree with you because that's more fun when we get right. to fight on camera and we disagree right. with each other. But I, I agree with you because I, I read somewhere in a book that um, the cause of stress is when your avatar is not in line with your reality. So your image on where you should be. So your created avatar online, how you look and the reality, you know, if that's not in line, it causes unhappiness. And, right. and I think if, if you're doing what you want to do, if you're being challenged and if you're, you're enjoying the things you're doing inside, outside the office, and, and some people need a lot of challenges and they become an entrepreneur, it's fantastic. Some people don't want these challenges, but they want to succeed in life and be very wealthy and become entrepreneur. And sometimes they succeed and sometimes they don't succeed, which is ho horrible. So I think it's, it always has to do with the image you're creating for yourself, where you want to be and, and how, how you want to look at yourself. And if that's in line with reality, then you're a happy person. Mm -hmm. If that's not in line, so therefore I am talking against myself because if you're a specialist and you created the avatar of a specialist who knows everything about one subject and is doing that every day and that's what this person wants then he or she should be very happy and maybe a lot of them are very happy i don't know we need to figure that out but i do believe when i talk to a lot of generalists that although they have a lot of challenges in their lives because they do all kinds of different things and sometimes they create a mess because of that. On the other hand, they seem to be very happy. Okay, let, let me ask you something. The, the, think of a person, you don't, have, don't mention their name, of a specialist who you think is uh, miserable or that their specialty is... Uh, the, the cause of their misery. Yeah, check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now talk to me more about the circumstances. Uh, like, how is it that that their specialty causes them to? Uh, because, because I can explain this. I'm right-handed. When I write my name with my right hand, I don't have to think about that, right? If I use the pen on my left hand and I write my name, it takes a lot of effort. Now, I learned that a lot of people tend to choose a job that is the opposite of themselves to be challenged. So I think a lot of specialists are there using their left hand instead of their right hand because they want to be challenged every day, again and again and again with the same thing. Mm. So their left hand becomes their right hand after doing it all the time. But on the baseline, it's not exactly what they want. They chose this. And I've, I've, I've seen this several times with people that I know very well that are specialists. And 
they are doing exactly the thing they hate the most in their job and they're good at it. Hmm. But to say that they are happy people, no. What you're saying reminds me of a quote by uh, Marcus Buckingham, um, like a leader in the strengths movement. Which he says that you shouldn't push yourself outside of your comfort zone. You should push yourself inside of your comfort zone. Yeah. So the challenge, you know, the, the kind of um, healthy <coughs> happiness inducing challenge comes from, uh, you know, doing the, 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 the next level of, of something that you, that fits with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I can, I can understand. And I think that generalists in, in their own field of comfort, that's huge. That's a huge playing area, right? Right. And when you look at the comfort zone of a specialist, it's smaller. We can agree on that. It's deeper, but smaller. I mean, I think you, you have to unpack that a bit. So when you have to push yourself, in order to be happy, you have to push yourself within your own boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe even create bigger boundaries or, or more, a bigger area. I don't know if I say that correctly in English, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a generalist, you tend to have a large playing field of interest, of knowledge, of understanding, of experiences, right? Your, yeah. your, your area of discovery is huge. When yeah. you look at the specialist, there are no lots of different topics. It's Several topics, still, it's not one topic, of course, as a specialist, several topics, and there can be a job and a hobby and, you know, and, and that's it. And it's very deep. I mean, within that area, they know everything. Right. But to push yourself within your boundaries, as a specialist, it's, it's more difficult than as a generalist. And therefore, I think a specialist when they push themselves, they go outside of their boundaries, outside of their own field a bit faster. I think they're more, they're more comfortable with uncertainty and they're more flexible. That's for sure. Generalist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're more flexible and they're, they're, they're more- maybe, kind of maybe they're not more flexible, maybe their area is just wider and then they seem to be more flexible because they have more general knowledge and more experience. They've seen it before. They have experienced it before because they do a lot of different things. Maybe, yeah. maybe we're not more flexible. We just have more experience. Mm. Right. But yeah, I'm no. thinking of new things. So yeah, so you're saying it's not necarily that, that if, if something new comes up that the, neither the specialists nor the generalists have, have encountered before that the generalists would, would be more uh, adaptable to it. Well, I'm thinking about this and I'm trying to figure this out. And it's difficult because when I talk to generalists, multipotentialites, Lots of them, everybody is saying to me that although they haven't done it before, like a new thing, a new experience, they feel that they have had that experience already. So like a deja vu, it's, um, and this is, this I find very strange. But I always ask this when I interview a multi-potentialite. Like, for instance, 
I have my first flying lessons in an airplane. Mm. True story. And I was thinking about it. I thought, oh, I would love to fly. I would love, I want to fly, I want to fly, I want to fly. And I had that experience my entire life. And I would dream about it and whatnot. And then the first time I was in an ultralight airplane with an instructor and he said, okay, you take over the controls, you fly. And I flew, you know, very simple and easy. And he said, are you sure this is your first lesson? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely the first time, but that it feels, I feel confident. It feels like I've done the, this before. So, which is strange because I've never done that before. Right. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out where this belongs because if this is true, then a generalist even has more experience even when they actually haven't had this experience in this life. Right. I mean, which is which is goes to say that that they have which makes them more adaptable, I think. Yeah. If that's what you're saying. Uh, I think so, but but that's something that needs to be um i would love to prove that to show that yeah that's uh we have that would be one of the research projects then yep yeah you have you, you kind of uh I, i'm a bit challenged in this interview because i was coming up i was when i was preparing i was kind of like in the mindset of the benefits the, the like value of of generalism and specialism and what people are talking but you you pose this as more of a happiness topic like the 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 difference between generalism and specialism on happiness so now i'm kind of like i'm trying to kind of like uh, adapt this to because you might be more successful but, but less happy you know yeah but what is success then so successful in our world means more money um less failure, um, more likes, more followers, right? Um, and that's success. Well, okay. But I think we agree that that's re not really success. Yeah, I mean, let me put it, let me, uh, if, we, if we go back to the trade-off, one thing I'm, uh, think I'm thinking of is, is the issue of innovation. Right, so you can say generalism is more conducive to uh, innovation. You're more you're more likely to be successful as an innovator if you're a generalist. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't really doesn't necessarily have to do any, anything with with happiness. No, uh, but I think what about this one is. Um, when you look at people who are extrovert and introvert, mm. I know a lot of people, or a lot, I know some people that are introvert, but deep down inside, they're an extrovert. But they learned because of their education at home, mm. of their family situation, mm. to become an introvert, because that was a better solution for their lives. Mm. But in, in the true fact for them is that they're extrovert and mm. vice versa. So maybe also I know a few specialists that are honestly generalists, but they learn to become a specialist because that fits better in our society. And yes. I think if you are a generalist, but you learned yourself you thought yourself how to become a specialist. Then the big question comes along again. Is this specialist going to be happy or not? Right, 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 right. This is, um, yeah. The other way around doesn't, it doesn't work the other way around, I think. It's, I think it's not possible as a specialist to become a generalist because right, it fits right. better into their society or their working circumstances and whatnot. Maybe you can adjust yourself a little bit, but not really from a specialist into a generalist. I think a generalist can become a fake 
specialist. If they right, push right. themselves hard enough, then they can be there, but they're, it's not their true self. Right, right, right. This is kind of a, a, a more than one resource when I, uh, that I mentioned in the article, kind of agree on this, that, that, that uh, now in our society, um, specialization, specialization became the norm, the, 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 the usual thing, um, the status quo. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and it wasn't always like that. So like, I don't know, 600, 800, 2000 years ago, uh, Plato and whatever, like the, the, the ancients, uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't unusual to have someone who mastered many fields because the knowledge was less. So people would talk about, you know, the same guy would talk about uh, he would be a philosopher at the same time he would be uh, a doctor at the same time he would be a historian blah 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 it was more manageable uh, than because the, the amount of information wasn't that as, as much as now uh, now it's just kind of like hard to everything exploded so we had to kind of specialize but they are calling that it's it's now uh, they are calling for the return of of this this polymath uh, yeah. figure right now, yeah. um, because even though things are more um, kind of not tidy, just se segmented, uh, it's also more fragmented in the specialized um, kind of spe in specialization. Uh, but but in reality, life is much more interconnected than this. I think that's a, that's a good phrase. In reality, life yeah. is more inter interconnected that way. And I think that's why also Google and investment banks are now saying we prefer to hire generalists over specialists. Right. Just because uh, of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's... Um, it's, I found an amazing, uh, when I was preparing for this, or revisiting it, I, uh, I found an, an amazing example of how things can be in interconnected. So one of the proponents of uh, generalism, his name is uh, Samuel Arbsman. He's a complexity scientist. Uh, now there's technical stuff that I wouldn't uh, understand but he says that uh, some, so creating a, a doing a Sudoku uh, puzzle yeah. or a crossword puzzle can be connected, uh, seen similar to logistics uh, in, a, in a company. So he mm -hmm. actually says this in a literal way, not in a metaphorical way, that the, you can create a Sudoku puzzle I don't know if it's called even a puzzle. Let's assume it's a puzzle. A Sudoku yeah. puzzle that if you solve this puzzle, you'd be able to solve a logistics problem in Walmart, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. for me, it's mind blowing that, that I could, I'm not interested in Sudoku, but I'm interested in crossword puzzles. I could do some crossword puzzles and then something else seemingly unrelated uh, would, would kind of would gain insight in that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you have the insight part, and at the same time you have the effect part. So uh, I also like to think of this example. You, you know that the stereotypical kind of classification in, in high school of jocks and nerds. Mm -hmm. Jocks are the people who are social, athletics, blah blah blah. And nerds are the smart guys, books and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but in reality. If you want to be one of the ways to raise your kind of cognitive um, functions and improve your thinking is by exercise. It's not just about it is by physical exercise. So yeah, playing basketball I don't know like four hours a week can actually make you a better writer, a better blah blah blah, a better blah. So it is. 
interconnected interconnected in a very beautiful way and it's important when you're 14 years old to take in a career assessment really to focus <laughs> on what you're doing the next 16 years right <laughs> i didn't know you were 14 i think it's fantastic right and, you know what's funny about that <laughs> is that i ended up being it, it happened like a, a reversal happened like i ended up being in the same field of the job person fit career development <laughs> and all of that stuff but i i stopped being just on the receiving end so now i'm i'm doing the kind of the, the writing the articles i'm doing the coaching blah 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 workshops uh so i don't know there, there's an interesting reversal that's happened which is kind of similar to like like lots i think lots of psychologists or or therapists go into the field because they have their own uh kind of problems psychological problems that yeah. they try to solve yeah. and once they figure uh, not figure that out once they're in, in the field it's like okay i might as well i might as well teach people or not i might as well teach people but like i have this calling to to so you need to uh, develop an assessment a career assessment especially for 14 years old i was thinking now when you're talking i was thinking we should make a career assessment for uh, that that measures how where do you lie in the spectrum oh definitely oh, in yeah. terms of uh, generalism and specialism because right now i'm kind of like i was telling you like i, I don't know till now i don't know where do i lie in this like the number the, my, the, my number of interests yeah I don't know if that's uh, where does it lie in the spectrum. Uh, and one of the the complicating complicating factors is like I th this is for example my uh, my uh, bookshelves right. Mm -hmm. Every um, section has uh, a label. Mm -hmm. So psychology, then uh, psychopathology uh, disorders, then talent. But yeah. for me. The I see the connections between them, like for somebody can come along and say, what does talent have to do with what does uh, career uh, choosing a career have to do with psychopathology and disorders? But for me, I can see the connections. Yeah. Um, which is, again, it might be a more towards the big picture uh, generalist um, uh, approach. But uh, yeah, I'd like to know how how. Because I I, th I think I don't know I think you have an agenda to put me as the, to label me as a uh, as a generalist, not agenda like you, you not an agenda like you see you, from my writings you think I'm I'm a generalist, but other people like my brother uh, just I asked him today like do you think I'm a generalist or a specialist like no definitely a specialist because you dig too deep. So I, it's I not think a, I think you're in the middle. Seriously. Right. I think you're really, really in the middle. Um, so I don't have an agenda to <laughs> put you from the middle to the other side. No, um, not an agenda. But but I I, I I like to challenge you also, you know, in in, right. in thinking like what what's what's happening, and also try to understand why why is this topic constantly on your agenda? The specialism, generalism. Yeah. And I know it's because of the job search and, and uh, understanding that, but there are so many different angles you could choose and you chose this one. And, and, and that's interesting. Yeah. And in that case, in, in, mm. from that perspective, for me, then you're more of a generalist than a specialist. But yeah, from, an, there's an agenda. But from <laughs> another perspective, you're more a specialist. That's why I enjoy talking to you. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Goes all directions. It's interesting. When I shared this article with people, I got uh, one of the reaction was, oh, one of the, they put on their LinkedIn that they're multi-potentialites. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She said, when I, because the, the article is, is, is um, divided as generalists, specialists, and hybrids. Yeah. After reading the article, she said, "You know what? After reading the article, I, I might fit more in the in the hybrid uh, section." Mm -hmm. So, kind of drawing distinctions between them is not 
is not clear cut. Like no. it's not easy to 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 draw distinctions. No, but it's never black and white. And I think also when you grow older, your multipotentialite area stops. You know, this is your area. If I look in my own life, I'm I'm not adding new things to it. This is my my area of interest, and therefore my specialism. Mm. You specialize in journalism. No. You don't specialize in journalism. How would you no. phrase it? I think I'm 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 specialized in communication, working with people, uh, photography, art, and you know, I have all these areas and they're all interconnected in a way, and that's my specialty. No, I mean like you specialize in multipotentialites. Yeah, yeah, which is what I mean is you specialize but, in. Genders. But it, but it stops right. There is not like a new subject or a complete new. It's it's not that I keep learning new languages. Maybe I will start learning a new language. But 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 I'm I'm not into languages within my playing field of multipotentialite. So you see what I mean? I have this area that I play right. in as a generalist and, and that's it. And maybe little things can add to it, but it has like, if you go in the old days, we had a magazine store, right? And you had all these magazines in a press shop and people would say as a generalist, you know, I'm interested in everything, which is of course not true. Because if you look at all these different magazines, nobody is interested in all these magazines, sincerely interested. You could say, oh, this is, this is about gardening. Oh, that's fun to look at. But it's, it's not your pure interest. It's always a section of photography, cars, and, and whatnot, and not everything. Right. It's impossible. And I think if you become older, within your generalism, you will never have the complete magazine store of interest in your system. It, it, it's always a selection that you find interesting and that's wide and general, but you stick there and you're not doing everything. It's impossible. It's a spectrum. Right? And it's therefore- and I, yeah. therefore, I think the older you become as a generalist, the more you become a specialist in that spectrum. Because within this area, you go deeper and deeper. But it is conceivable that somebody would uh, would open new, completely new areas as they yeah. progress in life. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that happened with you, but you know, some people have. Yeah. That's the thing that you, it's... Everything have, ha, everyone has uh, their own path. Mine included a, a, four, a ten hour assessment at fourteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, I what I suggest is this is interview number two. Let's right. do interview number three soon, sure. and we talk about a different angle. Right. Sure. This was happiness. We call this chapter happiness, and right. next time we will enter another chapter and maybe viewers listeners can send us a, a message and say how do you guys look at this or that so this right. is happiness let's continue and go to the next subject i would love that right sounds great yeah thank yeah. you thank you very Again. much jordan um what time is it for you it's eight o'clock in the evening i think yes yeah okay Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to interview number three. I hope the sound is better this time than last time. Yes. And uh, let's see. Thank you so and much. We should we should do one once come to Jordan. Yes. Yes, definitely. In real life, it will yeah. happen. Definitely. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Okay. And I will put your details underneath the YouTube video or the podcast or whatever so people can find you. Yes. yes. Everybody, if anyone wants to contact me, you're more than welcome.
Thank you so much. Bye-bye.